So here's the etiology that it is the pre genetic uh, uh, factors and the oxidative stress that lead to the uh, defective cliff indigestion, and as a result, there is increased pro inflammatory cytokines, and there is an imbalance between the anti angiogenetic and angiogenetic factor. As a result, there is the manifestation of the uh, pre eclampsia features. So coming on to the role of prophylaxis, aspirin. Aspirin is a phytooxygenase enzyme inhibitor that reverses the imbalance between the thromboxane A2 and a vasodilator prostacycline. Calcium supplementation. Uh, calcium reduces the parathyroid hormone release and it decreases the intracellular calcium. As a result, there is decreased smooth muscle uh, contractility. Fish oils have uh, omega-3 uh, fatty acids at, and uh, they are also thought to inhibit the thromboxane A2. And supplementation of the antioxidant, uh, as we know that there is, a, uh, there is an oxidative stress in the etiology of the preeclampsia, so we give antioxidants to the preeclampsia patient. So what are the indications of immediate delivery in the patients of preeclampsia when the BP is uncontrolled, when there are deteriorating liver function or renal function tests, there is a progressive fall in the platelets, there are neurological complications, there is a non-reactive CTG with deceleration, and if the fetal condition is clearly deteriorating, it offers void delivery. Uh, so, in the patients of preeclampsia, the two main causes of maternal death are the intracellular hemorrhage and acute or adult respiratory distress syndrome. So, as the intracellular hemorrhage, it complicates a significant proportion of death. The mean arterial pressures are used to guide management. So, if the mean arterial pressure is more than 1.5 if it's more than 1.5 millimeter of mercury, then we give IV antihypertensive to the patient. So what is uh, mean arterial pressure? The formula for the mean arterial pressure is two into the diastolic blood pressure plus the solid blood pressure divided by three. So normally it is one. Uh, it is uh, in between seventy to one ten millimeter of mercury. So if it's more than one twenty five, we give IV antihypertensive. Levetolol is the first line treatment. How do we give levetolol? We give IV bolus of twenty mg if uh, the mean arterial pressure is more than one twenty five, and. Uh, Followed by a 10 rest interval, we can give 40, 80, 80 mg boluses up to a dose of 220 mg. Uh, so, labetalol, which is injection, it uh, has 50 mg in 10 ml. So, we get two, uh, 4 ml of the labetalol, that is 20 mg. And once the mean arterial pressure is less than 125, we can start an infusion of 40 mg per hour. And uh, it can be increased if necessary or if a dose of 160 milligram per hour is detained. And the second line of drug is hydralazine. Hydralazine is given 5 mg uh, bolus if the uh, mean arterial pressure is more than 125. So here 1 mg of hydralazine has 20 mg. Uh, we dilute it in 9 and we get 2.5 cc of hydralazine bolus. And we can give it to, to uh, 15 mg. And when the mean arterial pressure is less than 125, we can start an infusion of 10 mg per hour. And we can double it if uh, necessary at 30 minutes interval or tailor satisfactory response is uh, achieved. So, in the patients of preeclampsia, we know that they have leaky membranes, there is an increased intravascular fluid and uh, uh, less albumin that can lead to pulmonary edema. So we have to give IV fluid with caution. Uh, the most protocol limit fluid in the intake is approximately to one ml per kg per hour. The patient should uh, police catheter should be fast and the uh, fluid balance should be recorded. Anticonversion therapy: magnesium sulfate up to eight gram can be used to control an eclamptic fit, and diazepam diazepam can also be used. But its depressive properties are long lasting than, uh, than the uh, anti conversion therapy uh, properties. So, magnesium sulfate can be given as 4 gram IV loading dose and can be uh, given as a maintenance of 1 gram per hour for 24 hours. 
and uh, but we have to be very careful while giving magnesium sulfate because it can cause toxicity. The patient should be catheterized and urine output should be monitored. If the urine output is less than 30 ml per hour, it indicates toxicity. Meanwhile, we should uh, monitor her for the reflexes and uh, it can cause cardiac uh, arrest and respiratory depression. Antidote, antidote is uh, 10 milliliter of 10% of calcium gluconate. Magnesium sulfate can uh, uh, magnesium sulfate reduces the risk of cerebral palsy in the fetus, and it is a basic analgesic, and it has a uh, it uh, it is a prophylaxis of choice in uh, in, in place of diazepam because it uh, causes less mechanical regulation and causes less pneumonia in the maternal. Anesthesia of choice in regional blockade uh, GA with uh, EDT can cause severe hypertension, so we give uh, regional blockade in, uh, in preeclampsia patients, uh, but coagulopathy must be excluded. Platelets should be more than 80. And one third of eclamptic fits they occur postpartum, and uh, intensive monitoring is required 48 hours after delivery. So, uh, uh, but uh, the eclamptic fits which occur after delivery, they are most, uh, they are not, they are unlikely to be associated with serious morbidity. So blood pressure should be frequently measured and anti-hypertensive therapy must be continued after discharge at home. And future cardiovascular risk, the women with preeclampsia, they have four-fold increased risk of developing hypertension and two-fold increased risk of ischemic heart disease, stroke and venous thromboembolism, even up, up to 14 years after pregnancy. So, uh, so women who have early preeclampsia are at highest risk. So we need to monitor the patients uh, with the uh, postpartum. We have to monitor the patient with a urine complete LFTs and RFTs. And if we see any derangement in the labs, we, we, we can refer her to the physician. And uh, early monitoring of the BP can lead to the... Uh, in uh, Early assessment of the cardiovascular risk and the patient can be manage early for the BP, for the hypertension. So that's all for the hypertension. Good. Thank, Thank you. You can do this as a slide. Now, you have three charts. You have made the sub-bullets. Then, you have made a few points. The first one was one slide. Dr. Abhya has presented uh, very nicely uh, and comprehensively about preeclampsia, uh, including her last uh, presentation in the uh, in the, uh, on last Wednesday. There are a few comments which I'll add. Uh, I'll just add a little bit about management, and then uh, I'll uh, show you a few slides about uh, uh, screening about preeclampsia because this is the new thing in. Uh, management of uh... oh, I don't think it was. ये मैं अब ये वाली प्रेजेंटेशन ये वाली प्रेजेंटेशन बंद कर दें मैं अब स्क्रीन शेयर करने लगा हूँ वो छोटा वाला जो है ना उसको करना है मैं ऐसे मिनिमाइज कर दूँ मिनिमाइज करते 
रिपोर्ट किसको I'm starting my presentation. Actually, this, yeah, I, I'll put it on uh, the net as well. But uh, and these are the risk factors for preeclampsia, which previously have been shown. Uh, we'll not go in that direction. Uh, without severe features, uh, preeclampsia can be asymptomatic. That's why it is important that we continue to monitor all those women who are at a greater risk who have risk factors like primary gravidas, those with uh, 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 twin pregnancy or multifacial pregnancy, or who are obese or who have uh, diabetes, or uh, those or all those women who have risk factors. These uh, should be uh, closely monitored for uh, developing preeclampsia. Uh, maybe they are asymptomatic; they do not have uh, the the symptoms of raised blood pressure, which would uh, uh, be evident in cases where the, uh, the, the uh, blood pressure is very high or there is fulminating preeclampsia. So patients with severe preeclampsia display end organ effects and may complain of the following. All, all these are because of then the effects like uh, cerebral edema or others. But uh, uh, if you look at these, these are the symptoms which are not necessarily of uh, raised blood pressure. They are not only related to uh, raised blood pressure, but are a part of uh, the whole uh, disturbance that occurs uh, in cases of severe preeclampsia. Uh, since we know that it is a, a systemic disease, it is not confined only to uh, uh, the uterus or the placental bed, or it, or it does not only affect the uh, uh, fetal growth, but it affects, it, it's a multi-system disease. That's why there is a multifactorial or multifaceted presentation of uh, cases with severe uh, uh, preeclampsia. So these are the features of those. And therefore, the assessment would uh, be in those cases who have uh, new onset hypertension, uh, they should undergo these tests uh, because uh, they can develop uh, health syndrome. They are more likely to develop health, health syndrome. Therefore, these investigations should be carried out. These are the laboratory values for preeclampsia. Protein urea, urine dipstick, protein keratin ratio greater than that, serum uric acid level above 5.6, serum keratinin level above 1.1. Similarly, platelet count less than 100,000, elevated PT or the APTT, decreased fibrinogen, etc., so these are the tests and uh, the normal values and how they get disturbed. Fetal assessment should be carried out through ultrasonography, biophysical profile, evaluation of fetal growth, umbilical artery, Doppler, uh, SD ratio, et cetera, that is uh, seen. And cardiotocography is the main clinical uh, mainstay of uh, fetal monitoring. The treatment uh, for preeclampsia is delivery. And now, does that mean that as soon as we make a diagnosis of preeclampsia, we deliver the woman? Not really, because you have to take into consideration essentially two factors. One is the severity of preeclampsia, and number two, mature, pre, uh, the, the maturity of the pregnancy, maturity of the fetus. And thirdly, also, uh, how does the patient respond to that and uh, what, what is the status of the fetal well-being? If fetal well-being is uh, being compromised, uh, uh, it is uh, reasonably mature and uh, preeclampsia severity is uh, gradually increasing, then of course uh, one would uh, go for delivery. So without severe features, hospitalization, paternal monitoring, uh, to detect worsening uh, status of preeclampsia or early developing developments of complications and fetal monitoring expectant and steroids for lung maturity if uh, the pregnancy is say, around 32 weeks and induction of labor after 37 weeks if uh, 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 preeclampsia is without severe features. With severe features, control of blood pressure and uh, prevention of seizures. If uh, convulsions have not taken place in prevention and uh, 
Rabia just told us that magnesium sulfate is a good agent and uh, now everyone knows and we made a comment about magnesium sulfate also last time. The induction of delivery should be considered after 34 weeks gestation. So that is uh, in cases of severe weakness. Yeah. Acute treatment of severe hypertension in pregnancy, antihypertensive. I'll show you a couple of uh, uh, tables which were given uh, uh, perhaps last year or in 2020 in New England Journal of Medicine. That those are quite useful. I'll show them to you how to control blood pressure. So uh, antihypertensive treatment is recommended for severe hypertension, uh, the criteria of which we already know. And the goal of hypertension treatment is to maintain a blood pressure around 140 by 90. We do not want it to lower it too much because then the uh, uh, blood pressure would be too low for uh, adequate essential perfusion. Medications used, you know, hydrolyzing, levitalol, nifedipine. I, I take levitalol a little notch up and nifedipine, of course. And uh, we don't really use uh, here sodium nitroglycide. I don't have personal experience in that, but uh, that is also used in severe hypertensive and refractory when <coughs> the patient is refractory to other treatments. Prophylactic treatment with magnesium sulfate is indicated for all patients with preeclampsia. Diuretics generally should be avoided. Uh, despite that overt uh, gross edema, uh, prusamide should uh, not be given. Uh, those are to be avoided. Uh, because if you look at the uh, uh, circulation volume, that is actually shrunk. That is smaller than uh, what it would be uh, in a normal intensive woman who is pregnant at the same uh, stage. Uh, therefore, if you uh, give uh, diuretics, then uh, that's likely to be further contracted. Then. Uh, so uh, those are to be avoided. The temptation to relieve toward until and unless there are two uh, indications for that. I think it is given here. If not, uh, th that is if there is pulmonary edema or if there is cerebral edema, particularly pul pulmonary edema for that we give uh, and uh, central venous pressure. Now these are some of the things which are uh, uh, generally uh, automatically available in tertiary care centers. And that shows it because if the patient has to be monitored on a CVP line and uh, uh, the, the intake and output has to be monitored like that, then the patient should be in a tertiary care center. So that's why it is important that uh, if we uh, suspect that uh, uh, the preeclampsia is likely to be or it's uh, going towards uh, a severer form, then the patient should be shifted to a tertiary care facility where it can be properly managed. Now, why is it said when, when we are talking within this group, for example, those who are preparing for their FCPS part two or those who are at this level, then we, we are working in tertiary care levels and we uh, take it for granted that, of course, these facilities are available and we'll do it like that. But imagine someone, imagine women because most of the women are having their antenatal in primary care and secondary care levels. At primary care levels, it is important that those who deliver services at that time or at, at, at those places, all those healthcare professionals, whether they are midwives, whether they are doctors or family physicians, if they <clears throat> come across these cases, then they should be referred at least to a secondary level care so that their uh, monitoring and uh, further management of pregnancy uh, is carried out over there. And as soon as uh, one sees that the, the situation is worsening, then the patient should be referred to the uh, tertiary care. And why I'm making this point is that uh, uh, we take it for granted, all these facilities, but uh, we have to, as specialists in this field, we have to also uh, look at the, uh, uh, the public a health point of view. Uh, in, in public health, of course, most of the uh, uh, most of the care in antenatal is provided at the basic level. Uh, treatment of uh, convulsions is the basic principle of ABC airway breathing circulation. Magnesium sulfate, of course, and uh, loading those four gram and maintenance dose one gram. Recurrence, additional bolus dose of two gram. You should remember that uh, if uh, happens in quick succession, then what do we do? 
indicated prophylactic is uh, indicated in all women with preeclampsia so that we not let it progress to eclampsia. Lorazepam and phenytoin uh, may be used as second line uh, agents for refractory seizures. Criteria for delivery, uncontrolled blood pressure, ruptured membranes, oligohydramnios, oliguria, <laughs> this is preeclampsia with severe features. Or severe IUGR when estimated fetal weight is less than 5 percentile. Or uh, fetal testing, uh, biophysical profile, non-assuring, non-reassuring, uh, absent or reverse diastolic blood flow. These are all indications for induction or induction or delivery, not necessarily by vaginal route. Uh, Pre-eclampsia with severe criteria for eclampsia, headache, right upper quadrant, development of health syndrome, pulmonary shortness, pulmonary edema, shortness of breath, chest pain, thrombocytopenia, central abruption, <coughs> or unexplained coagulopathy. Postpartum, again, reference was made. Up to six hours period of oliguria would be normal, and one should not uh, really push the panic button at that time. <coughs> Magnesium sulfate. Uh, seizure uh, from is continued for 24 hours, liver function test platelet must document decreasing values prior to hospital discharge. So if you make sure that those are improving, elevated BP may be controlled with nephedipine or lipital or postpartum. So after discharge with BP uh, medication, <coughs> reassessment and a BP check should be performed at least one week after discharge. Undiagnosed chronic hypertension in most cases, uh, uh, the BP should return to baseline by 12 weeks postpartum. So patient should be carefully monitored for recurrent preeclampsia, which may be developed up to four weeks postpartum and for eclampsia that has occurred up to six weeks after delivery. So a word of caution must be given to the patient that this is something, this is uh, not likely, but may happen. And if you have uh, any uh, uh, issues and problems uh, like that, they should immediately come to the hospital. So three main types of uh, hypertension in pregnancy. What are those? One is uh, uh, the chronic blood pressure hypertension. Second is uh, gestational hypertension. And third, uh, preeclampsia or, and, and actually uh, uh, preeclampsia is superimposed on uh, chronic hypertension or sexual hypertension. That actually becomes fourth type. Its management is similar in all cases, but needs to be individualized for each woman using uh, yeah, yeah, MDD approach. Like multidisciplinary. multidisciplinary. Oh. But uh, essentially, the essential treatment you have for oh, 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 Prediction tools and uh, central growth factor may be useful. This is what we have done. I have seen some slides that I have shown you. Risk of complications continues after birth, after delivery of the baby, and implications for long term cardiovascular and renal health. This is what I have shown you. Management of blood pressure, the severe hypertension requires urgent treatment as shown in red box. Oral or parental treatment is administered to achieve a target blood pressure of less than 160, 110. Within a few hours, in the hours that follow, a blood pressure of 135 by 85 is the target with the approach shown in the orange box. Now let's go to the red box. This is uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the drug. It's the route of administration, and uh, in what dosage can it be given? So and and how it has to be and where it ought to be the patient should be managed. So levitalol, oral, intermittent IV or IV infusion, nephedipine, oral capsules, oral tablets. Uh, urgent and emergency is, uh, I would say, uh, so far as I'm concerned, I would take it the same, urgent and uh, uh, emergency. Emergency, of course, when <coughs> the patient uh, uh, comes in at that time, urgent uh, is, uh, for, and at that time it becomes urgent. If you find that the patient has all those features and uh, methyl dopa. So these are the, uh, this is uh, how blood pressure should be man managed, severe hypertension. And uh, this is known severe hypertension, lipidolol, nephedipine, methyl dopa. 
start with one of the three classes of drug and use, a, a, as a matter of fact, I would say that one, we can have printouts of that and uh, paste it in our table books. So, again, going to, uh, going back to this, this composite piece, and actually I, uh, in the paper, these two tables are presented like that. And for uh, clarity's sake, I divided them into two slides. Uh, here you see that uh, uh, this management interchanges. After management of severe hypertension, if the blood pressure has become lowered, then the, you switch on to this non-severe hypertension management. But if this becomes severer, then you go back to that and you uh, manage it according to this uh, uh, regime. So this is, uh, that's why severe and uh, non-severe hypertension. Let me just uh, look at this once again. Okay. Oh, this is something which I came up with only maybe a few days ago. Let me see. This is about <coughs> this paper came in. I uh, only recently. This is about how long should you continue low uh, dose aspirin. And uh, uh, the conclusion of this paper was that aspirin discontinuation in 24 to 28 weeks of gestation was non-inferior to aspirin continuation for preventing preterm preeclampsia in pregnant individuals at high risk of preeclampsia and a normal SLFT1 and uh, uh, simple growth factor ratio. So, um, uh, which, which meant that you could discontinue at 28 weeks, although I would continue with till. 35, 36 weeks. So this, this came and that's why I included that. And uh, now I will uh, take you to another. These are a few slides that I made of uh, about uh, screening. Screening for preeclampsia. Now, this is an important topic because uh, uh, it has now been shown that instead of being uh, caught unawares at 32 weeks, and suddenly you find that uh, there is uh, compromised growth of the fetus and the blood pressure, and we see that there is IUDR, and the patient is developing high blood pressure and all that. So if you, if we could, by some means, identify those women who are more likely to develop preeclampsia, then one would take the preemptive steps right from the beginning, right from the first trimester, to help better placentation, like giving uh, low dose aspirin uh, right in the, uh, at the first trimester, and then be on the lookout and uh, have those patients examine the antenatal uh, clinics more often. So that as soon as there is any any troubling signs start appearing, we take appropriate action. This is a, a short history of uh, uh, the preeclampsia screening timeline, how it started. This is a paper which came in uh, American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology in uh, 22. This is also available with me and I can give it to you. Uh, it started in 2009 when combined first trimester prediction model by logistic regression was suggested. At that time, then in 2010, NICE guidelines prediction model in the US, 2012, competing risk models, ACUG guidelines, US Preven preventive uh, task force prediction model 2014. Then uh, uh, Fetal Medicine Foundation, uh, uh, which started those first trimester combined prediction by uh, 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 this also started whole prior and others 
aspire trial and this is latest ACG so ACOG guidelines and uh, latest 2019 is nice guidelines or uh, fetal medicine foundation triple test uh, which was uh, tested in Asia and Pingo's endorsement of that so this is the, a timeline of that the important point that you can identify, it is not only, uh, it is not essential to remember how it started, but you can say that it started in 2009. But uh, these are the various guidelines that you can, uh, for your for your own sake, you can consult them. Like the uh, Fetal Medicine Foundation's first trimester combined prediction model. You look at that, what is it? And uh, is it uh, similarly, ACOG guidelines and uh, the PITO, uh, PIGO endorsed uh, first trimester screening. Now, if you make your own notes and just one page note of that, that will give you a good summary of frequency screening and that what it is. And you can also, uh, at the same time, uh, note with them where you got those uh, uh, essential tips. Worldwide, uh, it has been estimated that 76,000 women suffer from yearly with preeclampsia, and there are 500,000 babies who die yearly from this disorder. This 500,000, this is quite a lot. And preeclampsia is associated with an increased risk of long-term cardiovascular and chronic diseases, both in the mother and those children who were affected in that particular pregnancy. This is the point which Rabia made in one of her last slides. And risks to women with preeclampsia are in future life, chronic hypertension, future cardiovascular disease, stroke, metabolic syndrome, cognitive impairment. In this, there is a lot of emphasis on cognitive impairment like uh, uh, Alzheimer's and other, other uh, related uh, uh, ailments and chronic end-stage renal disease later in life. So far as the babies are concerned, they are uh, more likely to develop neurodevelopmental impairments, insulin resistance, diabetes, coronary heart disease, and hypertension. So these are the cumulative risk factors for uh, later life risk factors for women and uh, for infants in their later uh, life also who were uh, 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 the infants of that pregnancy. Now, this is... Uh, something which came only on 19th of September, 2023, screening for hypertension. This is an article which was published in JAMA. I could get only an abstract of that. But U.S. Preventive Services Task Force is the body which they have formed for uh, in, in, in the medical circles of the United States, uh, which looks at all uh, diseases and all uh, ailments, etc., and all specialities. And they emphasize uh, on the prevention of that disease and then, of course, uh, prevalence in the society and how uh, uh, the disease incidence can be lowered and how early steps can be taken to mitigate or reduce the consequences of that particular disease. Anyway, in this particular, uh, PowerPoint presentation, uh, so uh, uh, yeah, this is important that uh, they have observed that in uh, from uh, 1993 uh, to uh, 2016 and 17 in about say 23 years period, the incidence of uh, hypertensive disorders, uh, disorders of pregnancy in America has increased from 500 cases per 10,000 deliveries in 93 to more than double. 1,021 uh, per 10,000 deliveries in 2016 and 17. So there is an increasing trend of hypertensive disorders. And then the recommendation is screening for hypertensive disorders in pregnancy persons with blood pressure measurement throughout pregnancy. Now, this is a wise kind of statement. They do not uh, jump to fetal medicine uh, foundations triple test that you do start doing that in every woman. What is important is that uh, you do the basic thing, which is measurement of blood pressure. So the blood pressure should be measured throughout pregnancy on a regular basis for all pregnant women. So that is the important point here. And you know, this elementary and basic recommendation has come 
as late or as uh, late as uh, September 19, 2023. Now, this is again from uh, American Journal of uh, uh, Obstetrics and Gynecology 2022. This is a good uh, pictorial which tells about the uh, screening performance and how uh, uh, you can increase the uh, identification rate. If you look at only the maternal factors, it is history taking here. So if you take only uh, uh, the maternal factors, these uh, uh, maroon bars would be depicting preeclampsia before 32 weeks. This is known as early preeclampsia, early onset, E O P E preeclampsia, early onset, E O P E, early onset preeclampsia. And uh, preeclampsia, which happens uh, after 37 weeks, that is late preeclampsia. Or this is the less than 37 weeks, which is before that, the, the, uh, after 32 weeks and before 37 weeks. So this, this is, these are the three types of preeclampsia. The, uh, uh, the diagnostic accuracy or prediction uh, is uh, on, on this scale if you rely only on uh, medical history of the woman. If you add to that uh, mean arterial pressure, you see that all the three graphs that start rising that means the predictive value that starts to improve. With that, now if you, uh, along with maternal factors, you uh, do ultrasound Doppler and uh, you assess uterine artery pulsatility index, then it is better than mean arterial pressure. If you combine mean arterial pressure uh, uh, with the uterine artery pulsatility, Fertility index, that of course, both of these combined, uh, that raises it further. And if you further add fetal medicine, medical foundation triple test, this is uh, 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 the prediction is uh, quite high, up to 90% in, uh, in preeclampsia, which will develop before 32 weeks. So, this is uh, how uh, various uh, uh, assessments, how various tests. They, they increase the uh, uh, prediction of uh, development of preeclampsia. This is a good article which was published in uh, British Journal of Obstetrics. Uh, there were actually uh, other articles. This is a summary of that. Hypertension during pregnancy in 2022. And this is re related to placental growth factor vis-a-vis uh, pregnancy associated uh, plasma protein A because initially it was suggested that if both of these were uh, estimated, they would give good uh, prediction to that. But it has now been shown that uh, placental growth factor is a uh, much better uh, predictor than uh, pregnancy associated plasma protein A, and therefore this can be dispensed away with, and uh, you may not uh, uh, estimate that. And placental growth factor is something which is important to uh, be taken into consideration. Now, do you know how much uh, is the value of placental growth factor in early pregnancy and what uh, value would indicate that uh, uh, the woman is more likely to develop preeclampsia? For that, I would want you to make your own notes. This is a question for you to look up in the book or wherever you can and make your notes. Secondly, this was uh, uh, this is uh, from uh, another paper which came in uh, Journal of Clinical Medicine and that was published in 2023, and uh, it so shows that identification of group at increased risk of preeclampsia and fetal growth restriction. That is actually screening for preeclampsia on those in women without chronic hypertension, so those who would develop preeclampsia. And the risk of preeclampsia and fetal growth restriction was assessed according to the fetal medical foundation guidelines, which include maternal history, mean arterial uh, pressure, uterine artery pulsatility index. We talked about that only during the last slide. 
this is plasma pregnancy associated plasma protein uh, A. This was considered in this paper. You can take it out and the placental growth factor. And then after that, then using the principles of the Fetal Medicine Foundation, full bias and preface. And this also ultimately showed that uh, uh, aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid, this is the term that they have used, reduces the incidence of preeclampsia and fetal growth restriction in high-risk population. So this is the importance of identification, screening for preeclampsia in early pregnancy and institution of uh, the dosage. Now, uh, this is again actually the same, but among patients with a high risk, uh, risk higher than one in 100, uh, acetyl salicylic acid was administered at a dose of 150 milligram. Perinatal outcomes were assessed among the different groups. And the results were comparing women in the high risk group with those in the low risk group, statistically significant higher risk of pregnancy complications was observed in the high risk group one. And the complications included PIA, pregnancy-induced hypertension, any PE. Any PE means early onset, late onset, very late onset. Fetal growth, uh, restriction, and gestational diabetes development. And those pregnancies also were high risk for the infants. Uh, and they were more likely to end with a cesarean section. And newborns had significantly lower risk. So this is uh, the uh, the uh, outcome of uh, this study. So far as uh, so th therefore, uh, it is important that uh, uh, preeclampsia screening should also be carried out, uh, starting with maternal history and mean arterial pressure, which are non-invasive kind of or uh, which are uh, not resource-intensive investigations or uh, management uh, issues, which should be. Uh, so, so that uh, if you institute them in your practice, you would identify women who uh, have normal blood pressure at that time, but who are more likely to develop uh, preeclampsia. Now, this is first trimester preeclampsia screening and uh, uh, prediction. Sorry. Uh, Fetal Medicine Foundation, I have made the quite a couple of references to that. The triple test is a combination of maternal factors, uh, mean uh, uh, measurement of mean arterial press pressure and uterine artery pulsatility index, all those things which we have already discussed, serum placental growth factor, and the detection rates uh, we have seen in that uh, pictorial of uh, uh, American Journal in which it showed that uh, detection rates uh, were 90% and 70% 70 70 for the prediction of early and uh, preterm preeclampsia with 10% false positive. The, this screening is superior to that of the traditional methods by maternal risk factors alone. And the use of this prediction model followed by administration of low dose aspirin has been shown to reduce the rate of preterm preeclampsia by 62%. So this is the journal, it's the same journal that I already previously uh, talked about. Coming back to again reference of uh, 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 I think I have uh, you can this is a composite model this came in another paper screening for preeclampsia at various stages how it is done and uh, if you do all this then uh, that will show high risk uh, uh, patients who should be given aspirin and this this is this if the results are like that then low low risk and no aspirin and how are are uh, various of these patients are to be followed in the rest of their pregnancies. You can see above that it is given uh, in terms of weeks. This is the what you can do. You can uh, uh, try this uh, um, uh, assessment, uh, fetal medicine uh, foundation prediction model. Uh, this is the site, Evidencio. Uh, and uh, what is uh, full piles? It is full kebab, you have also preeclampsia integrated estimates of risk. This is full piles. This is the background of this background. And sorry. Okay. 
हाँ थोड़ी सी आगे पीछे होंगे स्लाइड्स व्हेन यू प्रो एक्सेस दैट सो दिस इज द काइंड ऑफ दिस आई शो टू यू द ऑडियंस ओवर हियर लास्ट टाइम दैट इन दिस यू फिल अप जस्टेशनल एज इन वीक्स एंड डेज Chest pain or dyspnea, no platelet count, creatinine, aspartic uh, transaminase, and uh, partial pressure of oxygen or uh, oxygen saturation. And when you do that and you click the button, it gives you the risk of what it is like. Sorry, the slide is going to be too many, but. Anyway, when when you access this site, this site, you just look at the bottom of this. You read up this that what are the methods and how it is done. But this is only for uh, the, not to be. Uh, it, it will give you some values, but this is not something that you can uh, uh, practice right away. The institution has to purchase this software and or this application, and then you utilize it. But you can uh, take advantage of this, and you can uh, see the outcome in a few patients. So, uh, preeclampsia is something which is an important uh, uh, disorder uh, encountered by a considerable number of women. General and incidences say that it can be two to eight percent, but uh, one can say that about ten percent of pregnant women are likely to suffer from preeclampsia. The consequences. Uh, of preeclampsia if not uh, managed well is that it become worse it is harmful for the woman herself it is harmful for the baby uh, and then there are long term later uh, after effects and risks uh, in later life of uh, ill health because it can uh, it, it results in uh, issues uh, uh, in later life both for the mother as well as for the baby and now uh, it's the Uh, initially, you know, fifty uh, or sixty years ago, the emphasis was on uh, uh, managing, uh, worsening, uh, to prevent worsening of preeclampsia, and uh, uh, management of those uh, uh, women who would have uh, eclampsia because the mortality in those cases was high. So I, I actually started my training when that was uh, greatly emphasized that you. Uh, Manage the women. Number one, to prevent development of eclampsia, or if eclampsia develops, then how are we going to treat that? Uh, but now the emphasis is totally shifted. If you look at this, the emphasis is on early detection, so that you can then uh, minimize the complications which are going to affect the woman and the uh, and the baby. So that you uh, and then of course there are now advancements. Uh, In the sense that you can, uh, uh, when you deliver the baby at an earlier stage in good status, um, uh, then we have a better neonatology that we look after that, and uh, of course lung maturity, etc., are now taken for granted. But these are the things that we need to look at uh, in our practices, and uh, we need to emphasize the importance of this to our. Uh, Uh, colleagues in uh, family medicine, so that they also are aware of the uh, implications of uh, and the consequences of preeclampsia if it becomes severe, and also the methodology by which we can identify them earlier. Now, we do not necessarily have to have all those uh, 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 lab uh, uh, tests, and uh, for example, placental growth factor. I am not sure whether it is uh, uh, assessed in Lahore or not. Similarly, uh, pregnancy-associated plasma protein A, which was uh, 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 quite popular to do a popular test uh, about 20 years ago, but now, as, as I showed in one of the slides, that that, that traditional paper said it, it's it's uh, not as uh, uh, predictive or its value is uh, less than uh, the central growth factor. So one would only that, and not this. So these tests may not be available, but simply measuring blood pressure, uh, assessing uh, mean arterial pressure, and in those where facility is available, you can ask for uh, uterine artery central uh, uh, pulsatility index, and uh, then 
combine uh, all those, and uh, then you have a good prediction model. And then, of course, uh, those tables in which uh, management of uh, uh, raised blood pressure is given, those would be helpful. Any questions, please? एक किसी ने लिखा हुआ है very high incidence in our setup and increasing day by day recently seen many patients they are being just received irritable and in ours they collapse actually you see <coughs> uh, that incidence is uh, in the tertiary care uh, facilities because the patients come in from uh, overall incidence may not be that high uh, but we do not have as yet uh, reliable means by which we would carry out such epidemiological assessment of uh, the prevalence or incidence of the disease in our population but of course that can be done one Secondly, uh, it is uh, important that uh, if we look at uh, the draining population of a particular hospital where those patients are coming in from, and if we could arrange some kind of uh, uh, awareness campaign for uh, 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 medical professionals who practice obstetrics in those areas, uh, may that be uh, even uh, uh, the DBAs or midwives or uh, 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 staff at basic health units or family physicians and we tell them that this is uh, what uh, 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 this is how we can diagnose it early by uh, uh, by e even say history of the woman and these are the features by which uh, we can identify those women who are more likely to develop preeclampsia and if we find that there is raised blood pressure at the earliest we should refer that uh, woman to secondary facility so this is how uh, 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 the, the, the specialists or the OBG professionals in uh, tertiary care facilities can uh, help the community. Uh, for example, if it is happening in Jinnah Hospital, then you would generally know where they, 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 these women come from. That's the importance of noting address in history. If you look at the history, and uh, instead of just saying that uh, the woman is coming from Port Radha Kishan, if you uh, wrote the proper uh, uh, postal address, you would know that she comes from that village, etc., etc., and you would know which of uh, those uh, basic health units, Raja Jang, Potra, the kitchen, or Mustafa Bad, or what, uh, that, 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 that is there. Because we carried out a survey uh, 20 years back uh, in uh, improving maternal health, and we looked at three rural health centers, the name of which I just mentioned. Port Radha Kishan Rajajak, and there was a population of about uh, 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 half a million, uh, which was covered by that. And uh, uh, in three years, uh, within that project, we made a good uh, impact on mental mortality. So much so that in one of the centers, the uh, OPD uh, uh, attendance increased from 12,000 to 52,000 in three years. And uh, we train. I, I carried out a cesarean section and was final in India in uh, a rural health center. And uh, the OTA was trained uh, in, to give uh, spinal anesthesia. The doctors were trained in performing cesarean sections if it was required. And uh, then we used to collect data from uh, Lord General Hospital, from uh, Chennai Hospital. Uh, uh, and uh, services hospital because these were the hospitals where most of the patients from those areas would come in. And we used to pay uh, people over in the, in the Department of Binding to keep a record of those so that our person would give every week, look at the record, find out uh, which were the patients who came in from those areas, and then identify and then follow those patients. So this is how it can be done. It, 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 it does involve a little bit of money and uh, does involve some uh, expense also. But this is how you can, uh, what is known as outreach uh, help of uh, uh, professionals and the community. So this is how one can assess uh, the, the incidence of uh, complications.
Uh, and that the spin-off, of course, would not only be the, uh, yeah. would be much more than uh, just uh, preeclampsia because uh, you will come across so many cases of diabetes, uh, gestational diabetes, and other disorders, or say fetal anomalies, things, there's a fetal anomaly. Why is this happening in one area with greater frequency, so on and so forth. So if you would just uh, make a pharma and uh, carry out this kind of study, that would be a good service. Okay, Lee, thank you very much. Good morning, sir. I am a morning. I am I am a morning. I am a I am a morning. I am a I was a little bit of a problem. I was a little bit of a problem. I was a little bit of a problem. I was a little नहीं वो सारे किसे भी टीचिंग डिपार्टमेंट प्रोटोकॉल्स उस तरह ले डाउन नहीं जिम्मे के होने चाहिए थे नहीं पर हाँ होने चाहिए थे डेट्स राइट मैं वो और भी वो याद कर रहे हैं सी के वो जेफ कोर्ट 1974 के एडिशन इस ओफिंग बग विटिंगटन मीडियम वो देता हुआ सी के इफ यू कल्चर विनायन रिचार्ज ऑन दैट इट � Trichomonal as well as candidal discharge. Oh. Show. Having simple microscope in the clinic or OPD and making a wet slide can oh. show. Oh, oh, so is other better. Uh, and, and obviously, that will show those flagellates or mycelia of uh, that and uh, narrow down the. On Terekoya, Arthas Kuria Batian and Puch, Kabi and on a vaginal discharge. Wet film ko under microscope they can eat the hobby, which ruins. I mean, I'm sure uh, you can any report, but I like it. No simple mayor, simple mayor, uh, oh. and we do not even have uh, uh, have it cultured. I, I know oh, culture, te, culture te, but I uh, plus minus ho jande. They are a wet film, they are visible ho jande, on the bed side. Well, I, I personally would think there are two features. One is uh, the <clears throat> uh, speculum examination and uh, the look of the discharge. One, because in many cases it is typically one or the other. And secondly, or, or third, uh, vaginosis, bacterial vaginosis, the smell. And I'm sure that nobody does even that, that uh, smell test. And the uh, second is the wet film. I, I, I think that uh, those who are not quite evident on physical examination, uh, at speculum examination, uh, then those, uh, half of those would be identified uh, on a wet film on, under microscope. Then we have a condition, but the chota pai, you know, that my man, I guess, oh, better, man, the quality of the man. Dish Parke Mamanali, there is it would take them punches all the garan cut a lap. On a cabbit and give a can a botia saria maman kaiser and get a maki kawaga. That saria galant to the zagat with maki the sanga. असल में बात यह है जी कि हम दोनों गायनेकोलॉजी पिछले कितने साल पंद्रह साल तो तो कठे कर रहे हैं हाँ सारी अप्रोच है एक को तो तो उस निस्बत से जो ये बोल रहे हैं वो समझो मैं बोल रहा हूँ जो मैं बोल रहा हूँ वो समझो फर्क बोल रहा हूँ थोड़ा सा फर्क ये होने लगा है इसमें इनफॉरमेशन लेटेस्ट है मैं तो ओल्ड फैशन हूँ तभी मैं ओल्ड फैशन सब्जेक्ट्स ढूंढता हूँ कि वो बोलूँ नहीं मैं 
ठीक है सर ओके जी थैंक यू